Hello everyone and welcome to our today's class. It is actually our third lesson on the topic force. So in this uh, lesson we'll be discussing uh, various types of forces. Uh, we'll be discussing actually five types of forces. One is uh, what we call the uh, frictional force. We'll also look at uh, magnetic force. We'll look at electrostatic force, centripetal force and finally uh, the surface tension. But before I begin, let me give you the quote of the day. It goes this way. Do not let failure uh, define you. Instead, let failure teach you how to do something better the next time. So let's get started. So let's start with uh, uh, frictional force. Now, frictional force actually is defined as a, a force that opposes the relative uh, motion uh, between two uh, surfaces in contact. A force that opposes the relative motion between two surfaces in contact. Now, there are various applications of uh, friction in the real-life situation. One is in uh, writing, actually. I assume somebody came with a, a, a soapy water and poured it on a, a blackboard or even a whiteboard. Then they told you to go and write uh, on that blackboard. You realize that your pen will actually be sliding. Yeah. Then another application is actually in walking. Yeah. Friction is very important in walking. For example, if you go to a room uh, where soapy water has been splashed on the surface, then someone instructs you to move from one point to another within the same room by running, you realize that you are, like, you are likely to fall down because there is no frictional force between uh, the surface and your, uh, your leg because actually soap is uh, an impurity that uh, tends to uh, or it acts as a lubricant that reduces the uh, frictional force. Then another application of frictional force in a real life situation is in braking of what? Cars. Yeah. For example, when you are driving in a muddy area or uh, in a muddy area actually, you realize that you can't take instant brakes. If you try taking instant brakes, the vehicle is likely to slide over because there is reduced uh, frictional force between the road and the tires of your vehicle and the tires of your vehicle now having looked at uh, a frictional force you also need to know that uh, actually frictional force will always act in the opposite direction for example if my hand is actually a body assuming it is something like maybe a vehicle or any moving object if it was moving in this direction the frictional force will act in the opposite direction i'm explaining this because there are some questions uh, which ask maybe you are given a body moving to the north then they're asking you that indicator, the forces acting on that body. So actually the frictional force in such a case will be acting in the opposite direction, which is the southern direction. Also, the body could be moving in east. So it means if it is moving to the east, then the frictional force will be acting towards the uh, west, which is an opposite direction to the east. Then uh, the second type of force that we are going to discuss is what we call the magnetic force. Now, as the word suggests itself, actually this force has to do with a magnet. So, magnetic force is defined as actually uh, the force of attraction or repulsion by a magnet. The force of attraction or repulsion by a magnet. When you bring two poles of a magnet together, they will either attract each other or repel each other. Now, we have what we call the law of uh, uh, magnets, the law of uh, uh, charges here. Yeah. So the law of charges actually states that like poles uh, will always repel each other while unlike poles will always attract each other. What we mean by like poles is that uh, when we say two things are like, it means they, are have, they have some similarities. So for the case of magnets, when we talk of like poles, we are talking of either a north pole actually repelling another north pole or a south pole repelling another south pole. But when we talk of uh, uh, unlike poles we mean a north pole attracting a south pole or a south pole attracting a north pole so the law of uh, uh, magnetism actually states that uh, uh, like poles will repel each other while unlike poles will attract each other they will attract each other now there are certain materials which actually when brought close to a uh, conduct to, to the magnet they will be attracted others won't be attracted so materials that are easily attracted by a magnet, we call them magnetic material. A good example is actually uh, a nail uh, 
uh, most metallic material for example uh, a nail you take a, a razor blade actually close to a magnet it will always be attracted so such are examples of magnetic material materials that are attracted to a magnet or attracted by a magnet then we have other types of materials which are not attracted by a magnet we call them non-magnetic material for example you bring any plastic object close to a magnet it won't be attracted you bring a wood close to a magnet it won't be attracted so such materials we call them non-magnetic materials non-magnetic materials then uh, uh, another type of force that we are looking at is what we call the electrostatic force now i'm sure you have encountered uh, uh, situations in life uh, whereby electrostatic force is under application for example i have my small pieces of paper here with my pen here my plastic pen here then you realize that whenever when i rub the plastic pen actually uh, in my hair like I'm doing uh, uh, this way then I bring it close to uh, the papers it is actually attracting these papers so a force uh, that is actually the force of repulsion or attraction uh, due to static charges is what we are calling the uh, electrostatic force the force of attraction or repulsion due to static charges it is called electrostatic force now what do we mean by static charges the word static itself means stationary stationary or not actually moving so uh, the force of attraction or repulsion due to static charges it is called a electrostatic force now when I'm rubbing the biro pen actually the plastic or any plastic material in your hair you are actually charging that particular body the process of charging a body by rubbing it uh, in the hair or any other uh, rough object actually we call it electrification by friction it is called electrification by friction now we will we will discuss more about uh, this electrostatic force in another topic uh, another interesting topic actually uh, in book one called uh, electrostatics called electrostatics one that's when we'll be discussing this force in uh, uh, its depth now the other force that we are looking at is actually what we call the centripetal force the centripetal force now what is centripetal force so centripetal force actually this is a force that constrains or restricts a body to move in a circular path a force that constrains or restricts a body to move in a circular path for example if i have a stone and then i tie it maybe using a thread or even a, a wire at its ends and then I start rotating it in a, either a, a vertical circle or even a horizontal circle this way then in that case there is actually the centripetal force because you will realize that that stone will rotate in such a way that it is forming a circle around your hand that, it, that is it is restricted to move in a circular path so a force that constrains a body to move in a circular path uh, it is called centripetal force now there are different applications of this centripetal force for example a uh, centripetal force I've just given you an e example of a sling or a stone tied at one end of a string then being wired in a horizontal circle uh, that is one example of centripetal force another example of centripetal force is actually what we call the merry-go-round merry-go-round now I'm sure you've gone to uh, uh, any park anywhere. The merry-go-rounds are usually in the parks. This is where maybe children or even adults actually sit in particular uh, seats. Then they are rotated in a circular path. That is what we call the uh, uh, a merry-go-round. So a merry-go-round also applies the uh, centripetal force. It uses the centripetal force another example is a separation of uh, ghee from milk now this you will understand better when we learn about the centrifuge in uh, a topic the second topic in form 4 called the uh, uniform circular motion uniform circular motion now the other uh, force that we are discussing uh, for today it is actually what we call the uh, surface tension it is what we call the surface tension now what is surface tension surface tension is a force uh, that uh, makes the surface of a liquid to appear like a stretched elastic skin a force 
that makes the surface of a liquid to appear like a stretched elastic skin that is what we call the surface tension now under surface tension uh, this is whereby we'll be doing experiments like uh, when you carefully place a steel needle on the surface of water you realize that it it actually floats however when you add impurities for example kerosene it sinks why because impurities actually affect the surface tension by reducing it by reducing it so uh, uh, i'll be giving you some examples of experiments actually that uh, is involving the surface tension in our next class but maybe i can just highlight a few things that uh, there are other there are factors that affect the surface tension we actually have the impurities then we also have temperature now how do these factors affect the surface tension let's start with impurities impurities will always lower the surface tension of a liquid how do they lower the surface tension of a liquid so if you pour impurities uh, 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 that is a uh, detergents for example soap in water when you use that uh, water to wash the cloth you actually realize that the water is uh, it becomes actually very soft why because the impurities break the cohesive forces of attraction between the water molecules thereby making it easy actually to uh, 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 to wash the cloth using them so other impurities we can have actually something like uh, uh, something like actually kerosene you add kerosene on the surface of water it will actually break the surface tension of that particular uh, liquid so that tells you that surface tension actually relies on what cohesive forces cohesive forces the other factor affecting surface tension is the temperature now when temperature increases uh, that means the molecules within the uh, uh, liquid particles actually gain kinetic energy so remember kinetic energy is the energy in motion so this helps the particle to move to and fro thereby breaking the cohesive forces of attraction between the water molecules thereby uh, breaking the surface tension thereby breaking the surface tension now we've come to the end of our class today but I, I have a very good story uh, about a scientist called uh, Thomas Edison I'm sure you've heard of such a name now Thomas Edison actually uh, he was a scientist uh, when he was very young actually his teacher once told him that uh, he was too foolish to learn anything yeah he was too foolish to learn anything then after school actually he went to his first two jobs actually his first two jobs he was fired because the employer thought that he was unproductive he was not adding any value to uh, that particular business then Thomas Edison did not give up he went on to conduct 1000 experiments failed experiments the 1001 experiment was the light bulb it was the light bulb so we can learn from this story that failure does not have to stop you it should actually help you to see how to do it better the next time so how many times do we get ourselves into situations whereby we are failing then we just give up here is somebody who conducted 1000 experiments which failed but he never gave up thank you this is uh kind tuition academy subscribe on youtube thank you